So hi, welcome back everybody. This is part two in the series about how I make my own turnouts. Today I want to concentrate on making the points here and here and also on making the switching rails that determine whether the train goes straight ahead or branches off. We also will be making uh, ties and guardrails. Now some thoughts about the point of the switch, which is this part, the sharp pointy part. Um, as you see, if a wheel goes through it, what happens is that the wheel follows the rail that is going off. See that? So the wheel is still on the rail now and only now is it going onto the point and the thing is that because the rail is going outside and the wheel is tapered if the rail is going outside then the wheel is going down a little bit so that is why you have to bring down the point and file it off a little bit so that it goes down gradually but up gradually as well so if the wheel goes this way there's always a risk through this gap that the wheel will take this route and to prevent this from happening there has to be a guardrail on this end so that the wheel cannot go in this direction. So there has to be a guardrail that I ha still have to make. It's important to know that the guardrail is not uh, destined to drive on, but it's destined to hold the wheel into place. Now for the point, all we need is just two pieces of rail. I have a piece of scrap rail laying around that I will simply cut into half. And now it's simply a matter of filing like so. We've got some soldering grease on them. That's right. So we now lace them lay them in place. That might be alright. Now with a little bit of soldering tin see how it flows into the crack. Real nice. That, that's done. So this isn't very firm yet, but it is quite pointy and I'm happy with that. So now let's place it here. This is the correct size. And this is the correct size. So that's two firm joints, some filing to do. The top of the rail is a little bit thicker, a little bit wider than the flange of the rail. And this thickness needs to be 
filed off to get a perfectly sharp point. I'm also filing off excess solder and I am filing the point down a little bit so that it has this smooth transition when wheels pass over it. So there we are. Not so bad, I think. So next up is the rail that has to fold into this notch here. So we'll just, this is where the notch is. So I'll cut it off here. Have a little bit of extra length. Now there's two things to do. Of course, we have to file it here so that we will so that it will close very precise. And then we'll have to bend it here at exactly the right position. And I like to file it first because then we just lay it into the notch we can exactly mark where we want the bend. Now, as you remember, when we were making the notch, we took about half out of the rail. If we leave half a rail here, then it should fit exactly. So this is thin enough. Um, it will close, I think. The only thing we have to do now is two things. One of the first is that we will file in a 45 degree direction here the underside of the rail and that will allow for some tolerance with remains of solar that are maybe under the rails so it will close easier and the other thing we will do is the very thin edge of this rail will bend back ever so slightly. You see me here filing off a little bit of the top of the rail. And the purpose of that is that we don't want the wheel to catch onto this rail. That would do the trick nicely. Now since it is exactly where we want it now I can mark where I want to bend it so just take the rail just bend it a little bit I think this is too much even So that's the rail in its position. Um, what we should do now is you see that I have a very narrow uh, gully between the two rails and I will bend it back just a little bit so that the wheels won't catch on this rail. So they have some way of leading it into the right spur. And I will do this, uh, let's see. Look, from the point on, I know that the wheel is on the point now. So that's the place where I can bend it back just a little bit. So that we have... There we are. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much. There we go. And now I'll cut it off at the end of the first sleeper of the two. So I just mark that. It's correctly in position now. I mark this. Cut it off. So, cut it off.
Okay, I did the other rails off camera. I soldered them in place. I must admit that I've used the uh, the old Dremel to save a bit of time on the filing. I tend to file off about well 80% and then finish it off with the file. The file gives you more control and gives you a more flat surface and it solders uh, easier I think. So uh, I always finish it off with a good rub with, uh, with the file. Well now we're going to make the uh, connecting rods here. The, the switching uh, rod that is going to do the switching for us. And for this I have this very small, I think it's 2 by 0.4 millimeters copper strip. And uh, we'll solder them under. Let's just take off a piece. And they will go under here. Now the important part is that um, in the open position the strip must still be under the rails as it keeps this rail down. So it prevents this rail from going up. So it should still be in the open position, it should still be under the, under the main rail. So I've given the turnouts a first cleaning with isopropanol alcohol. And in the process I removed uh, the paper template and now I'm going to solder on the switch bar. So there we are. The clamp takes care that the switch is soldered onto the bar a bit in this direction which will make it close nicer. This is just a thing you learn from doing it a few times. Because otherwise the bar won't close very neatly. So you see I've turned it around because I want to solder from the inside. Um, I'm going to do that, just apply a little bit of soldering paste. So now on this finished turnout you can see that I've made tiny little tie plates here and they're not only tie plates but they're also creating a little bit of distance between the sleeper and the rails and when I super glue them to each other then the super glue won't run out to this rails and attach to this rails as well. So that's actually why I do it. I've noticed that when I uh, super glue this, the super glue will run out to the other rail and attach this one as well.
guardrails. They're made out of plastic strip. It's an angle, 2 by 2 millimeters. And uh, I folded them a little bit so they catch the wheel that is rolling in. So that's the finish of the job this week. Next time we'll place a servo motor and we'll wire the turnout and maybe even paint it. So I hope to see you again. Bye for now.